Well, welcome. How are you? So it's always a pleasure to have these opportunities to share some of my favorite stories. It's been such an exciting week and just taking a moment to just get ready for you today, but I've got two stories I want to share for you with you. And I just want to just say thank you to the Riz Nest for the time that I've spent sharing stories at this facility. A true story. In 1984, I read an article about the Riz Nest changing paradigms or opening the community to storytelling. And a year later, I happened to go to the Lens Nest with an after school program not to tell stories, chaperoning about 15 to 20 elementary school students. And I had made some business cards. I think I had done maybe two or three sessions. And I told Karen Kelly that I was a storyteller. I gave her my card, and she would call me occasionally. And it just so happened that since my only work was the after school program, I could go whenever she called me. And that started this residence journey. So I'd like to say thank you to Karen and Madeline and Carol Mumford and Sharon Crutchfield and Sue Gilman and uh, who was the last lady that we had? I think her name was. First name is definitely Melissa, but I can't remember the last name. And I hope I did, oh, Lane, Lane Shakespeare. So these have been executive directors. And I must say thank you to Jerry Williams, who called me so many times. And also to Nana, who I met there. And she's, she's passed now, but she was a part of the time that I've spent at the ranch nest. And then, so many things I want to say other than just tell you a couple of stories, but I really need to get to the stories. But I do want to mention my uncle. As a child, I had an uncle who treated me like a son, but he also told me stories every time I was in his presence. Not just me, but anybody who was around. I had him and I had Mr. Best, the Sunday school teacher, who told me Bible stories every Sunday. And I had my cousin, Willie C, who told Master John tales while we were working. And that is the foundation of my storytelling life. I studied theater and did plays and thought I would be an actor, but I ended up being a storyteller and a puppeteer who writes a poem every now and then. And I have two stories I want to share with you today. One is actually, uh, I'm so glad I remember Lane because this story came to my list in the way that I tell it because I'm Lane. He's uh, Joe Chandler Harris's great great grandson, and when he became executive director, he wanted us to uh, do two minute versions of one of our favorite stories. So I had a story that I love to tell called "Brad Terrapin Learned to Fly," and when given that opportunity, I said, "I think I could do this in two minutes." And I'd like to share that with you now. And I, I don't want to do anything without my story chat. This was actually part of my story like before I came to the Riz Nest. So I can't hear you, but I still would like for you to repeat after me. Stories come as stories go. Listen to the words and help them grow. It matters not if the stories are true, only what they mean to you. 
Our stories come and stories flow. Listen to the words and the way we go. Shall we go on a little trip? Are your seatbelt self fastened? Buckle up now, and I don't want you to fall off any stories. The story says that Brad Terrapin and Brad Buzzard was friends. And whenever Terrapin would come to visit, Buzzard, Terrapin said, Hey, Buzzard, we ain't gonna show me how to fly. And Buzzard said, Boy, you can't fly. You ain't got no wings. No, you can't fly. But Terrapin said, You, my friend, you got wings, so you can show me how to fly. Buzzard said, All right, all right, all right. You know, we're getting ready. I'm going to come by tomorrow, and I'm going to show you how it feels like to be flying. Brother said, okay, okay. So next day, Buzzing went over to Terrapin's house, got Terrapin up on his back, and I'm going to stand up for something, okay? He got He got uh, Terrapin on his back, and he went. Flying around. He did this four or five days. And on that last day, he brought Terrapin home and he got him up. Terrapin said, Okay, Buzz, when you come by tomorrow, I want you to take me up and, and let me go. Buzz said, What? I, I, I want you to take me up and let me go. Buzz said, Terrapin, you can't fly. You ain't got no way. So you can't fly. Now look, you showed me how I feel like, so I want to do it myself. I want to go solo. Let me say. All right, I'm going to take you up. I'm going to let you go solo. So the next day, when Buzzin got over to Terrapin house, believe it or not, Terrapin was ready. He had on a little leather jacket. Had a little silk scarf wrapped around his neck, had on some goggles and a helmet. He hopped up on the front buses back and he went flying around. And old Terrapin, he was sitting back there just holding on, waiting to go so long. Now, between you and I, what do you think is going to happen when Terrapin goes so long? <laughs> well, Mother turned and let Terrapin slip off the back. And that Terrapin started sinking down through the air. His smile got about that wide. But now, while, while he was falling, he, he wiggled his tail and he flipped over one way. He wiggled his feet and he flipped back the other way. And you know what happened? He hit the ground. But when he hit the ground, Buzzer, he circled around and lit down beside him and said, Terrapin, Terrapin, buddy, is you all right? Terrapin said, no. No, Buzzer, I'm ruined. I'm ruined for life. Look at my back. See that, boy? I told you you couldn't learn how to fly. Terribly said, no, Buzzard, you're wrong. You taught me how to fly pretty good. You just didn't show me how to land. <laughs> All right, well, I, I love that story, and I hope you like it too. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Brother Rabbit, he's the undisputed hero of the Uncle Remus tales. But Brother Terrapin runs a close second. And it's, all, it's almost this kind of parallel African folklore as well. You have the rabbit and you have the spider. But guess who is the next primary trickster in African folklore? A Joppa, the tortoise. And so I want to tell you another eternal story. And, and I'll end there, I guess. And again, this is one of my favorite ones too. And uh, this story says, uh, it was a Saturday afternoon and all the critics 
had gone down by the river. They were sitting on the stumps and on the logs and on the rocks. And at first, they were just talking about the weather. Then they started telling jokes and telling stories and planting dozens and all that. And then they started bragging. Like old bro Fox said, hey, I got the sharpest teeth. Ain't I, ain't I got the sharpest teeth? Brother Wolf said, Cousin Fox, you might have the sharpest teeth, but I said, that's a dresser. And look at Brother Bear. Bear said, you know what I is. I'm the strongest. And while all the other critters were bragging and carrying on, Brother Rabbit didn't say a word. They looked at Rabbit. Now, Rabbit, what you is? Rabbit says, you know me. I've got nothing to say. And so not only was Rabbit quiet, the Terrapin, he was quiet too. So Brother Bell hit him on the shelf. <laughs> hey, Terrapin, what you do, huh? Brother Terrapin said, Brother Bell, I, 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 I got nothing to brag about. <clears throat> I know. You the slowest. <laughs> hey, everybody. And he the slowest. Yeah, 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 yeah. He the slowest. Tell me, say, brother, you think you the strongest, but I can show you that you ain't the strongest. How you gonna do that, little fella? You gonna get a rope, and I'll show you. Well, Brother Bear, he ran up to the barn and got him a rope. He got that rope and he come back down there. He said, okay, 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 here go the rope. What you do? Tell me, say, you give me one in and you take your in and all the other critters up by the woods and then I want you to see if you can pull me out of this pond this morning. He said, hey, come here, man. Let go up by the woods. So Bear, he got his end of the rope, and all the other critters followed him up towards the woods. Now, you know what Terrapin did? He got his end of the rope, went down to the bottom of the pond, and tied it around the tree root. He tied that rope around the tree root, then he swam up top, and he got straddled, straddled the rope. And he says, okay, Brother Bear, go ahead. See if you can pull me out. Bear said, this is going to be too easy, too easy. What then? And he just grabbed the rope with one hand and jerked it. Uh! <laughs> okay, okay. I got to pull a little bit hard. What then? Uh! And Terrapin stared and moved. He said, okay, okay. Let me get it with both hands. And he grabbed that rope and he pulled it with both hands. <laughs> but Terrapin still didn't move. Now we kind of laugh at Brother Bear, but that's all I want to say. When Brother Bear saw that he couldn't do it by himself, he called on his friends, Brother Fox and Brother Wolf. And Fox and Wolf. They came and all three of them grabbed hold to the rope. And they started pulling and tugging and tugging and pulling. The palms started burning and the back started hurting and the knees started aching. And they let that rope go. Well, when Terrapin felt the rope go slack, he swam down to the bottom, untied it from the tree root, and just sat down on top of it. Bear and the other critters, they come down from the woods. And uh, O'Bell looked, looked down at Terry and said, boy, what you do? He said, Brother Bear, you almost, you almost got me. But, 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 but who you think the most strong is now, huh? Bear said, well, I don't know how in the world you did it, but I guess you the most strongest. Now, my friend. Ever since that day, 
out by the river, these bingo bears have been thinking that the little bitty terrapin was stronger than they were. But we all know terrapin went more stronger than Winston, but he was a little bit more. Thank you. How Brett Terrapin shows his strength. That first story was called How Brett Terrapin Learned to Fly. And in closing, I, I just want to thank you for listening. Thank Lorenz Ness for letting me be a part of this magical place. I forgot to mention, I, I couldn't remember Melissa's last name, but it's, I think it's Swindale. And then I worked with Jerry, I worked with Nana, I worked with Kaylin, and I also have worked with Colin. These ladies, Colin Ramancheri, Ramancheri, these ladies have been my link to the Rens Nest. And when they needed a storyteller, they called 404-468-3392. And it just so happened that I've been available lots of the time that they needed me. So Carla, Kaylin, Jerry, Nana, Carol, Melissa, Madeline, Karen, and I hope it, and Lane. Thank you for every opportunity you've given me to tell these stories. Thank your child Harris for actually publishing the stories and thank the people. Thank the people whom George Chandler Harris heard to learn the stories and then to be able to write them down. So having said that, we're going to close the door and I'll leave the drama out this time. Stories come and stories go. Listen to the words and help them grow. It matters not what they mean to me. Only what your heart can see. Our stories come and stories flow. Listen to the words and away we go. You may unfasten your seat, that's now. Thank you and have a great day.